start up that recording for another league. See if we can jam another one before I have to go do responsible things like work out before bed. Hey, good boy. Hey, thank you so much for the follow, man. Yeah, I do have to sleep at some point. I've actually been, like, much better about going to bed on time and actually getting, like, seven or so hours of sleep rather than what I used to do, which was sleeping, like, five to six hours. <laughs> That's not good for you, by the way. But I did that for a long time. But I think that's the nature of like when you're like going to school full time and working full time and trying to play magic and traveling and still trying to have a social life. Um, when you're doing all of that combined, like you're kind of stuck with the situation where you are gonna be burning burning all the lights at all the ends. Alright, let's see if they counter this. Yeah, it makes sense. Streaming can definitely do quite a bit to mess up your sleep schedule. Alright, countered. Fine. It's fine. This is fine. <laughs> this is not fine. Alright. We're gonna have Tron online at least. Bad Tron formation, but it's a Tron formation nonetheless. Did they encounter this? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! How rude! I foresee a cryptic in my future. Let's run up the thing I care least about. One PM till five AM? Oh my gosh. It's a good stream cycle. Yeah, that makes sense, but I think I mean, I mainly do the streaming because I enjoy playing Magic and it gives me a reason to do it. And I just haven't uh, had a good time to get back into it. I'm happy I get to do it now. But yeah, that's definitely the time frame to get it because you're hitting during those other cycles of time. And the fact that you're streaming too five, uh, until 5 a.m. is definitely going to like just let you get all the most late night viewers. And we got a bunch of people on the team that are starting to stream now, and I'm pretty excited about that. More and more players. Our teammate Larry and Steven Dykeman, Larry Fields and Steven Dykeman, they both are streaming a ton now, and then Andrew Wolfeis is too, so it's pretty sweet.
yeah, if you're going to be jamming the games, you might as well stream it, honestly. Um, especially if you're capable of doing so. Thank you so much, Death and Stuff, for the follow, man. Much appreciated. Oh, you're the one that got up to play the Demir Mill file? Yeah. Uh, him and Steven were telling me all about that. I actually haven't watched the video myself, but... <laughs> it's a good time. Just want to draw first. I dig it. I mean, I know Mill's got a time and place. I have a hard time playing it just because, like, <laughs> you feel like you're like crushing them, and all of a sudden they can just get you. And it always feels the worst. They're like milling them, milling them, milling them, and they sometimes still win. How rude. All right, we're now, was, this is our last basic here. Okay, sweet. Yeah, Larry's good people. Really happy to have him on the team. Cannot wait to start grinding paper magic again. My absolute favorite is still when it was in standard and you were getting Archive Trap, and I cast a turn two Lotus Cobra, and my opponent countered it, and it was, uh, I'm sorry, I fetched, and then they hit me with the, uh, the counters and just like hit me with triple, the triple Archive Trap, and I was like, okay, we're done here. And then the following game, I was able to, they countered me, and I hit them with the summoning trap because they countered me, and then I hit an, uh, an ember call. I was like, okay, this is fair. Yeah, CFB events and, uh, uh, CFB events and, uh, um, Wizards is ending their contract, right? want to run out the carn they we uptake it they beat it down to guess we do or do we just offer it up and go get a Sundering Titan. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's not surprising. Honestly, with everything that's going on and being unable to um, do anything with Magic right now for paper tournaments for the foreseeable future, and we're in such a weird spot with everything as a result of it, like, I could see them wanting to go forward with that route. They were already like losing money doing events too, all right? That's why they cut coverage. Which really sucked because, I mean, coverage is so enjoyable. It's definitely a really weird time for Magic. It's gonna. Prices are tanking and a lot of things. I think the game will recover for sure, but with the idea that even when things start opening back up, that we're going to get hit with a lot of... Yeah, I mean, the fact that we're still going to have to deal with social distancing for until a vaccine's reasonably made, and like at earliest, we're talking like next year... Um, it's going to be really hard to run events. Yeah, F and M's at the stores might work. But you just have to like slow everything down and like space you out appropriately. that and then they got deprived on top
Yeah, yeah. Force is a lot of minimal players. I mean, like even any of our stores that I know of that has a space for it. I mean, they're they're packing it in sometimes in order to get to like twenty or thirty players. So if you have to space it out, and then you're st like right now in Michigan, we're still capped at like ten players total uh, per area. So. We get a ensnaring bridge. They'll counter it and then we drop Karn. Yeah, drafting is just not happening. The only thing we want to bring in is the cavern. I'm gonna cut a sphere and we leave the rest. I could bring in the nature's claim, but I didn't really feel like that's worth it. Like, I don't want to hit like abundant growths and astrolabes. Like, they're just getting so much value on us as a result of that. Yeah, this is going to be a huge push towards online magic on the plus side. Like, there's just going to, they have to go to online play for all the tournaments. Which I'm happy about, but we're just, you're just not seeing the numbers, you, you know. Yeah, this deck could use more golos. Maybe. I don't know. I wanted to play the list as is. It's usually my rule. I you know, these people that are you know taking down these tournaments with these decks, like you want to see what they're doing and what they're getting the result of before you're like, oh I want them to change this or that. I want to see where their mind's at. But I would not mind more golos so far. They're going to be rude. They're going to be rude. You want seven Golos? That'd be intense. Are we playing like Primeval Titan now? Jam. Mm. No. Let's do worm coil. See if they want to counter this or path it. We'd be happy with whatever they do.
Oof, that's rude. So rude. I mean, I'm going to do that eventually when they go for their uh, work professional. I guess we can go cavernous holes and aim Eldrazi. And then run out Emrakul next turn. How interesting. All right, so we got four card types. What up, sweetie poo? Yeah, trying to get back into the streaming thing now that I'm over all of my schooling and work has settled down and stuck inside anyway trying to get back into magic i took a little bit of a break because i couldn't go to any paper events and obviously that's a huge driving force for me but uh trying to get back into a weekly stream now and uh, see what we can do with that Running our second league now with uh, Gigantha Golos Tron, and uh, we went 4 1 with the first league, and see if we can match that or get a 5 0. cause the most harm I guess the absolute biggest detriment is if we just make them archmage charm us twice we have to give them a land for that but that's fine So we'll just use their Sanctuary. Not use it.
And we'll call again. Yeah, pretty well set up. Uh, there's a couple rumors floating around. Uh, heard one was that uh, instead of being able to directly pay uh, play the companion, you're now going to have to play uh, pay three generic mana, and then that'll add it to your hand, and then you can cast it. It could just be straight up banning the companions, but I don't think they'll go that route. Um, also heard a rumor that it could be, or theory, I guess, um, that it is a... Uh, if you want to have a companion, you are going to start off with, like, six instead. Like, uh, but you, like, just, like, look at your hand, put one to the bottom, and then you get you, then you get your companion, so. Put them to one. I think both are pretty reasonable. I I don't know. I think the paying the mana itself might be a bit much, but it might be the correct way to go about it because they're so powerful. Yeah, I really like the idea of the whole paying the mana business. Pretty sure opponent's just dead here. Right, yeah, and it's not a big deal for fires at all, but it does slow down the fact that every other format is just using the companions a ton. And like the other formats may consider uh, slowing it down and not using them as much, which is kind of nice. the color identity one, like an EDH thing. I don't think that, that that doesn't do anything at all if they were to do that. Like every deck that plays it can easily handle that. And I know we can shoot them with the Ugin here, but I just feel like they just have another counter.
Like they have that force that they can pitch, so. That's fair, but I don't think that's the big offenders, right? Like, sure, you're hitting a couple decks, but the decks that truly care about it and what they're doing, they just, they're fine. Like, that's fine. I'm upticking on that because then they're forced to tap, do this, which is fine, and then we're just going to move in them. Definitely a longest match so far, but we got that with a 2-0. Snag some logging of my water real quick. Gotta keep that hydration, right? Yeah, I actually I'm a big fan of this list. It feels really good. Um, it's got a lot of draw power, um, and it's still doing the Tron things. The early threats that it has seems very reasonable. Like Thought Knot just fits in pretty well. Like I'm kind of disappointed we're not playing more Golos and more Thought Knots, but that's fine. I really wouldn't want to cut anything for him, so. Let's see if we're dead. <laughs> Turn Turn for Ulmug is good. Unless they kill us. <laughs> It's just a kitty cat uh, combo deck. 
with the uh, Yorion values as well. It's actually pretty sweet for us. If we do that though, we want a Sylvan scrying. Still, get this. And thought not. Okay. Carry added and helix. All right, they've got helix left. value chains they're getting with uh, Uriana Sahili is pretty sick. Like, we're gonna stop that, but you know. Have I played any Valorant? No, I have not played any Valorant. I don't really play too many FPSs anymore. Like, I don't think we want to bring anything in, honestly. Um, I used to play, like, a lot of Halo in, like, high school and everything. Um, and I would play, like, Modern Warfare 2 and something like that when I was a thing. But, like, now I barely play any. Um, I barely play anything like that. I, I spend most of my time playing Magic if I have the free time to. And then uh, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy VII Remake just to play that through again. And then I'll play, like, Warframe. And recently, my friends were trying to get me into Red Dead Redemption 2 online, but not quite there for that one. Um, I, I like uh, games that I can just jam with my friends, but FPSs are kind of hard for me to get into. I, like, I used to play a lot of League, um, and I used to feel like my reaction times are still where they need to be in order to handle playing those games. Um, anymore because I don't play them enough, so then my muscle memory is not as strong as they used to be. So, and if I don't play them all the time, then obviously I'm gonna like not be as good at it. So I had to like play them constantly. It was the same issue I had with League. Like if I wasn't playing it all the time, I would just like struggle to keep up with what everyone else is doing, and like I'd go from being a high quality player to like missing patch updates and changes to the meta, and so like. I feel like if you want to be good at one game, you have to like focus in on one game. You might be able to have a second game, but that's kind of it. And with where I'm at right now, uh, I'm okay with that one game being uh, Magic that I spend time on. And even Magic, I feel like I'm behind a ton right now, uh, just because of like that month and a half where I wasn't really playing other than like once in a while jamming a game uh, or jamming a league. Like if you want to be good at Magic, you got to jam games like constantly.
in order to keep up with where the meta's at and what's going on. Like, if you're not, you're just going to fall behind and you're always playing catch-up. And if you're always playing catch-up, you're never going to be where you need to be as a player. And the other problem is that I've also been, like, trying to focus a lot on my health, too. Because, like, I was pretty big, like, two years ago. And, like, I've been focusing on dieting and working out, so, like, every day now. My uh, friend Scotty Bush actually hit, hit me up with a... Oh, we're dead. I'm not going to make them go through it. Uh, got me a diet plan for me, which was really su sweet, and some macros for me to hit, and then sent me an extensive workout. So I was really happy about that. Um, so I've been trying to stick to that. And then trying to get outdoors. So, with all that combined, I just don't really have as much time to play video games anymore. Which is really sad. Like, the PS5 announcement. And, like, I'm not even, like, thinking about buying it. <laughs> I'm literally thinking about, like, I'm, I'm probably not even going to touch it. This is a sweet hand. If they counter us, I'm gonna be so sad. Thank goodness. But yeah, overall, I've been hearing a lot of positive news about Valorant. Ooh. Can't cast non-creature spells with number of lands it controls. So next turn we can run out Karn, but we can't this turn. and stopping them from combo is probably our best bet here. Could cause a lack, but I don't think that does anything for us. And I'd rather make sure they're not beating us. What are they hitting us with with this Bring Delight? Man. 
Yeah, I thought you would really dig that. That deck is right up your alley. Three, four, five, six. Still one mana short. I think we're just going to make them cry and play a Sundering Titan. Oh, oh, baby. Sweet, naturally draw it, like the professionals we are.
Obviously, I kind of forgot of our own torpor orb there. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> uh, but still, it triggers when it leaves play. <laughs> Next turn we're gonna Ulabog them, so it doesn't matter. Also 3-0. This pile is pretty freaking sweet. I feel like the only thing I would change right now would be just a little bit of the sideboard. Just because we haven't really gone against too much aggro. Maybe the meta has shifted enough for us to put something else there, but... most redraws here with this way and cast everything I think it's the fact that it's just a so it works with um, two option, two abilities here like you get to uh, generate mana for Golos and then you also just have a 5 uh, a 5 5 for 5 that you're able to run out there which is pretty good for you I'm uh, just having that extra body against aggro decks and against the, um, any mid-range decks and have, or control and just having an extra body that way is pretty beneficial. And it's like, it doesn't cost you anything to do it either. I want to have the man leak. Like, I think we can't play things like, what, Dismember? Because it has double black, right? Is that how this works? It's a map. Tower. Right, right. So, and and that's really not that much of a give up right now. Um, if December becomes like a requirement to play later on, maybe we don't play it. But for now, it just seems like a free five five.
Hmm. If we go get Torpor Orb. Uh, Snaring Bridge would stop them from attacking us. Guess that's probably the line. Force, how rude. Mm -mm. Gotta draw a good card here. So see if this resolves. If it does, we'll be really happy. Maybe we need some hits. Oh, yeah. Just like you wanted, sweetie boo. Uh, 
should have ran out the land a little bit better, but you know, can't have everything. Reasonable. He might think he went. But it ain't gonna happen. You got me. think we want to do that. Okay, reason not doing anything. Passing. Opponent can Ice Fang and Euro if they want. Nothing we can really do about that. Like the Euro and then draw their path and then they can path Kozlak.
I don't think we want to give up our Emrakul for an Ice Fang. Tap our team down, and then we're gonna wipe the board. Southern Titan, sweet. With all the lands everybody's playing nowadays, you can just punish them really badly. Shock just in time. Nice three O. -oh. Two more to go. It's a bit risky. Okay. And we'll keep it. Uh, ship the last zone. Karn and Thought Knot. 
and form Tron and see what we can do. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> That's rude opponent. <laughs> we really needed that. We already mulled down to four, my dude. We're doing it the slow way, but we're gonna get this world breaker out and we'll save another Thoughtseize in two turns, which would be pretty good for us. Ah, oh, yeah, five seven body. Pretty good, they're down to two lands. Is there something they have that I'm not aware of? That gives us death touch or something? Like, I'm, I'm blocking, but...
Yeah, opponent was just taking a while. Ah, dismember. Okay. I wonder if our opponent realizes that because they took that line, we're able to buy back our World Breaker and cast it again and take out their Watery Grave again. Yeah, like we're just doing that. I mean, they might have recognized it and just realized that that's the line they have to go because they are going to have a 7-7 seven, seven, um, seven, seven Death Shadow anyway that they can start swinging with. Um, I still think we block, right? No, I guess we take the 7 and just run out Gigantha or Gigantha. If we block, we get to sack again and then play it again, but then we, yeah. So then we're... We would rather run out the Gigantha next turn and then block. To their credit, Worldbreaker is an obscure enough card to play. It's only played us like a one of, right? We can go for the double block, and if they kill off Worldbreaker, we'll bring it back again and take out their Overgrown Tomb. Yeah, like the amount of text that's on Worldbreaker is actually like kind of insane. The reach is what normally gets people. The amount of spirit players, <coughs> Danny, um, that I've gotten <laughs> because uh, simply because of the reach. I haven't actually gotten Danny on it, but I've gotten other uh, other spirit players because of it. They're, they're like swing, and I'm like, okay, block, and they're like, that has reach. I'm like, yeah, why? I don't know. No reason for it to have reach, but it does. I'm still double blocking. So how badly am I getting blown out is the real question. It's a hit. And that counts.
All right, our opponent has one turn, and we've got two ways to kill him. All right, sweet. And I'm not changing a thing. I don't really want weather the storm or nature's claim. Everything we have is fantastic. Oh, it's like 11 o'clock. I was definitely supposed to get a workout in. <laughs> but we've got another match to play. No thoughtsies. Okay, so that's a stub. And we are absolutely fine with them doing it because we've got Tron already. Because we don't care. Highly skilled game that I'm playing here, you know? Don't have Tron, draw it. What are you going to do? Ooh, they do not have the land. <laughs> Either you do have Tron or you don't. 50 50, huh? Is that how that works? I should trust you. I'm the Asian here. <laughs> All right. One more. I don't see how you could be wrong either. It's either option one or option two. Every game is 50 50, right? Either you win or you lose. It is the dream race. We're back on the Tron grind. League one, we went 4 1. We're in League two, going for the 5 0. One more land, I would have kept it. One, two, three. Yeah, where does the tie come in, sweetie? Is 
Is it like 49.9 and then 49.9 and then a point two or something? So I feel like we should form Tron and just jam out this Thought Knot, but it's going to be awkward when we can't cast this other Sylvan Scrying or cast the Gigantha, but that's what we're doing. Now yeah, our opponent's just doing it for us. Too bad they didn't hit the mine. We're professionals. I don't even really want to run out the Sylvan's crying right now as a result either, so we'll just pass. So it's a 50-50 shot that we're going to tie, is that what you're telling me? You either tie or you don't. I'm so tired of you. Uh, Cryptic Jace. If they Jace, they bounce the Thought Knot. I think it's the chase. So it's a 50-50 shot whether we tie or we um, or you don't. So then what you're telling me is that it's a 50% chance that we tie and it's a 25% chance that we don't, I mean a 50% chance we don't tie. And if we don't tie, then the chances of that then results in a 25% chance of winning or losing. So in every game of Magic we play, there is a... 50% chance you tie, 25% chance you win, 25% chance you lose. Based off your map here. They're separate factors. Our opponent is a professional at drawing those Field of Ruins in an 85 card deck. <laughs>
I'm just saying if I compound that math Wait, what sock I put on does affect what I'm eating for dinner? I'm eating business. If I'm wearing business socks, you know I'm going to eat well that night. Thank you so much for the subscription, man. Much appreciated. And then see how much damage we can do. Definitely gonna make us draw two cards. one of the guiles gain for life and exile our graveyard I guess it doesn't really matter right Yeah, we actually are going to work on that. I'll be updating my stuff to a Swish overlay um, and then Swish backgrounds and everything. And then that way we have a much more professional look. We've got the logo, but I'd like a proper overlay. Um, I'll probably work on that soon, maybe this weekend or next weekend. Alright. 
So they've got Cryptic, Guile, Force, Cryptic, Guile, Force. Just draw four cards. No, I think we gotta just worm coil them. And then worm coil them again. So they've got Guile and Force and two unknowns. is pretty good for them. Swing, we can't block. The path are So they've still got Force and Guile in hand.
they have force in the hand. Try to run this out. Yep. All right, they got one draw. Boom, it's a good game. All right, uh, I don't think we actually want to bring in anything. Still, no, obviously. So, claims don't really see worth it here. Keep it. They're down to five, four, concede. All right, well, that was a little anticlimactic, but 5 0, baby. <laughs> All right, that's going to be it for me. Uh, I'm going to be uploading these to the YouTube channel. Please check out our team page, uh, website. We've got social media on Twitch, Facebook for Swish MTG. And we've got Swish Gaming for our website. So check us out. Um, we've got a lot of articles we're releasing. My first article will be coming out this weekend. And then I'll be uploading the videos as well. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. And we'll be back this Saturday for the tournament. I'll be streaming the entire tournament. And then uh, every week, Wednesday, I think, is going to be the, uh, where we're going to try to land it. Every week on Wednesday night. So thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful night. And get some rest. Stay healthy out there.